Turning now to the fight against the Zika virus, where researchers for both private companies and the U.S. government are racing to develop ways to prevent infection. This week, phase one of human clinical trials began for a Zika vaccine developed by scientists by the Walter Reed Army Institute of Research. It will be tested at their trial center in Maryland. Our chief medical correspondent, Dr. John LaPook, and CBS News medical contributor, Dr. Tara Narula, spoke to CBS this morning Saturday about what people should know about these trials. Well, this is an inactivated vaccine, so the viral particles themselves have been inactivated, so the people can't get Zika, but the protein coat that surrounds the virus is intact. Mm. So the idea is you give it to somebody, and it's the protein coat that teaches the immune system how to go after the Zika virus. Tara, I was reading that there's promise when it comes to rats with this vaccine, but is this the first human trial that we're seeing with the vaccine? So there's actually two other human clinical trials right now. The first is a vaccine produced by a company called Inovio Pharmaceuticals, and that human clinical trial started in June. The second is a government-produced vaccine, and that trial started in August. The interesting thing about these vaccines is unlike the type that John described, these are uh, called DNA vaccines. And they basically work by taking a small piece of DNA and re-engineering it to put inside that little circular DNA, pieces of genes that code for Zika proteins. When you then give that to a human, for instance, then the human body cells produce that protein, the body mounts an immune reaction against it. This technology has been around since the 1990s. We don't have any DNA vaccines currently on the market, but there is hope for these two. And if they do come around, they're easily produced, easily stored, easily transported. It's a technological tour de force. And I have to say, for the Zika piece that we did for 60 Minutes this past weekend, mm -hmm. I was actually there in August when the very first volunteer got the very first injection of this vaccine. And then a month later, I stood there with Tony Fauci, head of infectious diseases for the NIH, as we saw whether or not the tubes were going to turn blue or not. If they turned blue, it meant she made an antibody response, and we held our breath, and it turned blue. And I turned to Tony, and I said, what would you have done if it didn't turn blue? He said, I would have fainted right in front of you, John. <laughs> no <kidding. laughs> so are there any other new developments, John? There is a, a bunch of other approaches. One that's really interesting, and happened down in Brazil at the time that I was down there, um, was genetically modified mosquitoes. So these are mosquitoes that are modified so that they can only survive in the lab because they need an antibiotic called tetracycline to survive. They're the males. The males don't bite. So they release them out into the wild, they mate, yeah. they produce larvae that have the same genetic defect, and then they die. Yeah. So this is an interesting uh, approach. There was a referendum just this past election day down in Florida to see uh, whether or not the local community would accept this. And there's still some controversy, even though the referendum uh, passed in the county, the place where it specifically was going to be given voted against it. Oh, interesting. And so there's still a lot of controversy about what are the unintended, possible yeah, you unintended don't know. consequences of this.